Hi, and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. If you'd like to join us on this journey, have a look at the website below and you can follow our reading plan. Today we're in Exodus 37 and Matthew chapter 3. So Exodus 37 is the story of the building of the ark, the table, the lampstand and the altar. It was built exactly according to spec and covered in gold. I suppose what it tells us is that uh, it was extremely precious, a lot of effort going into worship. But the big chapter I want to look at today is Matthew chapter 3. This is the John the Baptist chapter. And I'm standing here at the fifth hole at the Maritzburg Golf Club, taking a bit of time out because the game's going a little slowly. And um, I suppose John the Baptizer would have been comfortable at a water hole like this. And it says this, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. I don't know if you've thought how weird this is, preaching in a wilderness. Who's in a wilderness? People flocked there to see him. And what was he saying? He was saying repent, which means turn, turn, turn. Repent means turn uh, because there is a king coming. The kingdom of God means there's a king coming to rule your life and to rule the world. This is he who was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, and that was in Isaiah 40. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the paths for him. So this is not a teaching that says you've got to prepare yourself for salvation, that you've got to get yourself all cleaned up and ready for God. You don't, you don't wash ceremonially so God can accept you. Uh, in fact, there was a, a theologian in the 13th century, Thomas Aquinas, who, who preached that heresy. But Calvin in the 16th century sorted that out. He said there's no such things as ceremonial washing. No, no, no. This is, this is preparing um, the people for Jesus coming. And uh, it's, it's no, not a case of you having to get yourself sorted out to be acceptable by God. It's, it's paving the way for the advent of Jesus. Verse 6 says, he was saying to them, confess your sins. And all that confessed their sins were baptized in the Jordan River. So what were they doing? They were... They were aware of their guilt. That's what that's what that did. Uh, sorry, the golfers are calling me. <laughs> and you know, then he said to them, he looked at the Pharisees that came down and said, "You brood of vipers! You Pharisees! You brood of vipers!" He, what is he doing? He was protecting the church against false religion. He was protecting his followers against false religion that was going to water down their faith. And then he actually turned to them and said, listen, you guys can repent and, and show fruit keeping with repentance. Well, you've got to change the way you're living. You, you, your religion is not going to help you. Your ceremony is not going to help you. There's another way. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but there's one coming after me who's more powerful than I that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's basically saying water baptism is something that I can do to point to Jesus but when Jesus baptizes there will be a coming of the Holy Spirit upon you and and it's interesting that he says he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire so so the the powering to live your life and also the awareness of a judgment that's coming a baptism of fire is also spoken about by Jesus when he said you know to his disciples I'm gonna go through a baptism you can't go through it's a baptism of suffering so it's an interesting thing that, that John says, when Jesus comes and you follow Jesus, you'll be filled with power as Jesus was filled with power, but you're also going to go through suffering like he went through. And so um, the next verse says, you know, he stands there in judgment and his winnowing fork is going to separate. When Jesus comes, it's not just going to be love the whole world. He does love the whole world, but it's going to separate those who follow him from those who don't. And then... Uh, when Jesus came to be baptized, John said, listen, I need to be baptized by you, not, not you. John was puzzling because he knew that he was baptizing people who had, who had sinned and he hadn't seen sin in Jesus. But Jesus says, look, we've got to do this to fulfill all righteousness. What does that mean? Well, that means he was coming to represent you and me. It was the first time he lined up in a queue, taking the sin of the world upon his shoulders. And in addition to that, uh, he was saying, I'm going to show you a picture now of what's going to happen. There's got to be a death to me a resurrection of me. That's the way righteousness is going to come to the world. And uh, so John consented and the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. And uh, there was a declaration from Jesus that 
His father loved him and was well pleased in him. Uh, when we go through our baptisms of fire, or when we turn to God and we ask to be baptized in water, we can expect the same thing. The coming of the Holy Spirit and the commendation of God that we're the children that He loves.